Hi guys, it's Lori. Hey, I'm doing this from the laptop and so I'm not, and I don't have, I've got, I downloaded the video uh, maker or whatever, but I don't know how to use it and I'm heading out. I'm running really late today. I've got a really busy weekend, but I wanted to first of all, wish everybody a really happy weekend. I'm going to be doing a video on um, where Mora went missing because I'm going to be in that area. So I'm going to do a little bit of investigating there. I can't do the interviews that I had scheduled to do before because I'm not going to have enough time, but um, I'm still going to go there, check it out. If it's video worthy, I will post something. Um, but what I wanted to talk about is a lot of spirit energy going on right now. A lot of negative stuff people are going through. Um, I've gotten, I think, four calls last week about negative energy, negative entities, I just gonna get my doggy. Negative entities um, messing with people. The veil is very thin. Now, I know it's hard for some people to understand that. You, maybe you've never um, dealt with spiritual matters before. Um, or maybe, you know, maybe you just, this is all new to you. And if that's the case, um, let me just explain really quickly. This physical realm is temporary. Eternity, the other realm, the spirit realm, it's permanent. Um, and it's it's not necessary. It's not necessarily what's what's thin. It's not necessarily where we're going to spend eternity. But there is a spirit realm. There's different levels, and um, we've always had a veil in between, right? And that keeps us from seeing. Spirit can still see us. We've got the Holy Spirit that interacts with us, but there's always the, there's also the negative spirits. Negative spirits tend to they use deception and manipulation, and they're really good at it. So they get people to believe that maybe they are a good spirit, but maybe that they're going down the right path. They get people to say no to truth um, because they're whispering in their ear deception and they're good at it so if you've been fooled please don't think that you know there's something wrong with you but that's why i'm always telling people use discernment because they're good they're really good our enemy is the father of all lies so anyway um um so if you're dealing with negative entities what you need to do is you got to get firm in your faith um, you will be under attack if you're doing the right thing. If you're on the right track, you know, people say, oh, if you're on the right track, everything's going to go smooth. I beg to differ. Let's look at the lives of the apostles. Their lives didn't go smooth, but they continued. They persevered. God cares more about your character than your comfort. So he's, he will allow certain things. He doesn't bring the bad, but he allows certain things so that we can build character. We can build faith. You know, he wants us to know that we have to depend on him, not just this much. Don't tell God you're in control. Because if you tell him, hey, I got this, and I hear people say that all the time. Well, I don't want to bother God. Um, this is petty. He's got a lot to deal with. I used to think that myself. That is a very religious way of thinking. Um, God wants us 100% dependent on him. Um, and not in a negative way. You're going to stand in faith. You're going to walk in faith. People that walk in faith are the most courageous people I know, and they're 100% dependent on him. So if you're having issues with spirit right now, if you don't feel strong enough in the faith, call somebody else in. Because these guys are, they're very deceptive. They, You know what? Okay. I was just listening to some guy who, who had an interview with the devil, he says. And people say, oh, is that really true? Blah, blah, blah. And then there's another guy who... Um, actually had, he wrote a book about um, his dealings with the devil. I know I've had my own dealings with the devil, but not direct, not like my son. My son was an atheist. Um, and I don't know if this was, because he went from atheist to agnostic to um, believer to Catholic to born again. So when he, I think this was at the agnostic stage, he was drinking a whole lot. And none of my kids can drink. We're not drinkers. We've got Native American blood in us and we're not drinkers. I don't even like the taste of alcohol, thank God. Um, but he was drinking a lot. And 
he had this dream and he calls it a dream, but it wasn't a dream. It was a visit, I guess. And my son, now you got to understand, he is, he's Mensa material. He's, he's brilliant. He's a, he, and I'm not just saying that because he's my son. I mean, he, he is, um, he's super, super smart. He's got a heart of gold. And now that he's become born again believer, he is working for the Lord. I could see him being, uh, I could see him being a pastor someday or a missionary or something. But anyway, um, he's always been very smart, like genius level. It kind of made him a little socially awkward. But anyway, he had this experience and he came to me and he was shaken. It shook him. Um, and he asked me what I thought of it. And I knew it wasn't a dream. I knew it was real. He was sitting in this room and he said the room was non-descriptive. It was basically just white. Just, he couldn't tell where he was, but he knew he was not in this plane. It was just a table with him and he could tell you better than me. I'm only telling you from memory of what he told me. But it was a man. He said he was extremely good looking. He was dressed perfectly like GQ, GQ, you know, he had a really nice expensive suit on. It was tailored to fit. Very, very good looking, very charming. Um, seemed like a businessman asked and sat down with him and almost like a job interview, like saying that, you know, um, he had so much to offer and sorry that he's had such a hard life to start with because he did. Um, all of these things. And I can't remember the specifics. Like I said, maybe one day I can interview him and you can hear the whole thing. But, um, so it turned out my son figured out in the dream that he, this man was manipulating him and didn't have his best interest at heart somehow. And then he kept saying things that were going to happen. He said that your little brothers will no longer live with you. Your, your stepfather's going to lie and steal them from your mother. And your, um, I can't remember everything, but it, different things, bad things that we're going to have, you're going to end up homeless, sleeping in a car. Um, and other things personally related to him, they were all negative. And the very last, and ev after each one, he would say, he had this drink there. And he would say to my son, you want a drink? And then he would say something horrific was going to happen. And he'd like show it to him. So my son was very frightened. And then he'd say, you want a drink? You want a drink? And my son kept resisting. But it was as if to say, if you take that drink, come with me. It'll be okay. I'll make sure none of this stuff happens. And that was basically the deal he got. You don't have to go through any of this stuff. I can make it right now so that you wake up and everything turns around. Your mom won't know what happened, but all of a sudden she'll be, have plenty of money. Um, her health will be good because the last thing he said to my son is your mother's going to die very young and leave you. Well, at the time I had serious health issues. I still have serious health issues, but at the time um, they hadn't really kicked in. I had to have them and then I got well and they hadn't kicked in again yet at that time. Which he told me all about this and I said, you know what, we just have to have faith and he's trying to get you to go to him. You did the right thing by resisting. I can't remember how it ended. Like I said, he could pro he probably remembers exactly. Um, and we talked about it. He shared it with me. He was so shook up. I mean, it shook him. And it stayed with him and it stayed with me too, but it really got to me when, I don't know, maybe it was like six months later, a year later even things that he had said started to happen. Every single thing he said, and I think like he said like nine things or something. Every single one, except for me dying, came to pass. Every last one of them. And as each one came to pass, he felt that um, he was being tested or or whatever. And again, he would have the opportunity to turn to the dark side. He never took it. In fact, it made him stronger in his faith. Um, it made me stronger in my faith, but it's true. It, all of those things happened. You see, 
Our enemy isn't going to come to, and not everybody's going to have that kind of confrontation. Maybe it'll just be the way things go in life. You know, you'll have an opportunity. Somebody says to you, oh, come. What's that movie? Um, I can't remember the movie, but it was with uh, Al Pacino. And it was all about, he turned out to be Satan. I mean, it was Hollywood. But what happened is this guy, uh, I think it was Keanu Reeves, got an opportunity to be in this big law firm and have all the riches and all of this. And then little by little by little, started stealing his soul. That's more real, not the way Hollywood portrayed it, but not everybody's going to have that confrontation. But some people are going to have, hey, why don't you just do this? Why don't you just do that? It's no big deal. Just lie about this. Just steal this. Just take advantage of this. Just squash on that person. Nobody will know. Just gossip about this. It'll change things, get you that promotion. You know, little things like that. And slowly but surely, he sucks you in. We have to stand in faith. Now, God's not going to step and say, no, nope, you can't do that. He's not that kind of father. He's not going to force you to love him. He's not going to force you to obey him. He's going to guide you. But he gave us free will. Free will enough to destroy ourselves if we want to. And some people say, well, why? Why do you give us the free will? Why doesn't he just intervene? Or why does he allow this thing to happen? We're looking at the things that hurt us. What if he intervened with everything? We'd be robots, right? So where does he draw the line? we got to stand in faith. And my whole point, and I don't know why I got off on telling you about what Josh went through, but my whole point is not everybody's going to deal with that. The veil is not only thinner right now, so the communication is more, uh, people are having different signs, communications with their, with God, with their angels, with their spirit guides. That's all good, but there's also the negative and the deceptive who will come through. They don't come through and say, you know, I'm the evil one. It's not how it happens not he's not going to say hey do this and it's bad go massacre all these people go cheat on your wife he's not going to start that way instead he's going to start causing strife in your marriage and then he's going to you know bring in some attractive person who seems great to listen to you you know what i mean and then before you know it you've lost everything he's going to bring in people that lie cheat and steal bring you to family court this is happening to my son right now lie cheat and steal Lie about everything. And it seems like God's not listening to him because this has all gone down. All these lies were bought. But you know what? The truth will prevail. And when it does, it does. And if these people don't want to repent and turn to God, that's their problem. Now, do we pray for people? Yes, we do. We pray for them and we send them love and forgiveness. Don't let a bitter root take hold because he'll do that too. He, You know, he'll take people, use them against you. And then when you get bitter... He uses that against you. He's that deceptive. He cares not about one of us. Okay? Even the people that do his bidding, he doesn't care about them. So with this veil being thinner, and then I swear with what CERN is doing and what's going on all over the world, evil has taken over. And now there's some kind of even bigger hole or the veil's you know, thin so much that more negative has gotten through. People are being affected everywhere. So stand strong in faith. Don't, you know, and how often do I hear, oh, well, where's God when this happened? And I get it that you're going through a hard time. But those same people that blame him, they're not there to praise him when something good happens. They say, oh, I worked hard for that, or I did that, you know? Come on. Let's not blame God. Let's turn to God because he's our only hope. If you don't know how to deal with these things, or if you're frightened, don't take your chances. Or if you feel like your faith isn't strong enough, don't take your chances because they're manipulative, deceptive. They may come in full blast, you know, scaring you, but that's usually not the case. But they will destroy you. That's the whole purpose. Kill, steal, and destroy. So guys, you know what? Don't do it alone. Don't go it alone. Get some help. I'm available to do that kind of thing. I don't charge for that. Um, and like I said today, I'm heading up to uh, where more went missing, so I'm going to maybe do some videos on that, but stay strong. Keep the armor of God on, okay? Because I'm telling you, we are in times, really, really scary times. Whether you believe it or not, we're there. All right, guys, you have a great weekend, and I'll see you in the next video. All right, this is weird. It's a laptop. I'm not used to it. Bye, guys.